Well, hello, Caviar Dreamers. Well, hello, Caviar Dreamers. So exciting. We have on someone who has their own podcast today. Mm -hmm. uh, behind the Velvet Rope, David Yontif. David Yontif, a very controversial character in the reality TV world. Yes, a lot of people are like, oh, he's a super fan, he's a stalker. But shame on you, because you don't know about David Yontif, that he's not only a licensed accountant, but an attorney, you know, set the bar, pass, set the bar, pass the bar pass in two states. Bar. He's actually very successful in his own right, very smart. And he launched his career from going from super fan to friend to podcast. And yeah. he's a great person. I, he's a personal friend. He is. I love him. He's a great guy. Really good fun. And I think you guys are really going to enjoy this. You'll be very surprised by the same thing. Yeah. Idea. I mean, I think people just always get their own notion. Like, who is this guy? He's everywhere. He's a stalker. He's, a, he's none of the above, by the way. And, of course, everybody's skeptical when you first meet him. And I'm like, wow, he's funny. He's, a, he's out in front of People Magazine waiting for me. He's here. He's there. But you know what? When you hear his take on it and, and everything he's achieved and, and how he's done this amazing podcast – um, it's really quite interesting and really inspiring. And I think he has a lot of great advice for anybody starting their own podcast. So very excited to get started with David from Behind the Velvet Rope. We're out with David from Behind the Velvet Rope podcast. David Yonjip, first of all, he's not, he's not a super fan. People say he's a super fan. He's like a friend. He's amazing. He's a major influencer. You guys don't know a lot about David, but I'm good friends with him. And listen, we started out as like, little fan relationship, but it's grown from there. He's like elevated this into a big career, but there's a lot you don't know about David, right, David? I mean, listen, I mean, first of all, thank you for having me, Margaret. Listen. I'm so happy you're on. Yes. So I want everybody to know how you've like launched this into like a major career. You've had on unbelievable guests. You know more about reality stars and housewives than me. I mean, everyone has somewhere. So, you know, I think everyone, like some people say, oh, he's a super fan. He's a super fan. So what if that's where I started out? To your point, right. I transitioned to friend and into a business. Exactly. And that's, you know, I think a lot of people, you know, would love to do that. And you have an amazing podcast, an amazing following. I mean, your picture is with everybody. You have to do a coffee table book as far as I'm concerned. Well, you know, I say, I talk about, the, first of all, I am writing a book. That's a whole nother conversation. That's a whole other day. That's, That's a whole other day. That'll be a juicy one. That's a whole other day. But like, it really is about the transition. Like, and I say this in my book, you're, you're, you're in my book, Margaret. And I talk Ooh, about yeah. you on my podcast all the time. You know, people are like, how did this become a business? I, I give you credit. I'm like, Margaret Josephs used to say to me, I was hanging out all the time with all the housewives. And Margaret's like, what are you doing? You know, like in a very nice way. Yes, yes. You're like, you got to make this a business. You got to make this a business. And I'm like, all right, let me, you know, you don't think I listen to you, Margaret. I listen. Like, <laughs> but I want to, yeah, no, I don't want to pick up, but I want people to know. It's like, David's super smart. First of all, beyond smart, beyond smart self-made millionaire. People don't realize is very successful. First of all, you're an attorney. I am an attorney. I used to practice and corporate. And an account. I, yeah, and an account. I used to practice corporate tax law. Does that sound exciting to either of you? That sounds very smart. Something I yes. can't do. I can't even do my own taxes. Yes, maybe you have to come over and, and help us. Anytime. It was just really boring, you know. And I said to myself, like, I, I practiced corporate tax law for like four years and then was like, listen, this is just not what I want to do with the rest of my life. You know, I think it's a hard thing for anyone to go through a change in their career, like especially after tons of years of schooling, you know, so anyone there that I think like follows what they really want to do from the beginning, I hear that. Listen, I'm like a Jewish girl from Connecticut. My parents were like, you're going to go to law school or you're going to go to med school and if you don't want to do one of those, talk to us, and maybe we'll still pay for your education. <laughs> <laughs> well, David, and then also you started a business that you sold, and that's how you made all your fortunes. So tell us what business do you have? Pretty much. So, like, so I practiced law for like four years. I knew I didn't like it. But just early on in practicing law, I was always looking at like what the HR people were doing. I had a lot of jobs during my time practicing law because I hated it so much. I'm like, let me just keep jumping jobs and hopefully there's something exciting. And then finally I did some soul searching and I'm like, no, it's actually practicing law. So because I switched jobs so many times and was onboarded, I was like, this seems fun what these HR people are doing and recruiting. So I knew I wanted to do something like with HR and recruiting. So when I 
stopped practicing law, I fell into like legal staffing, like literally placing lawyers in jobs. And then there was a woman who was starting a creative division at the firm, like to place like people in advertising and marketing. And I'm like, that seems even less conservative than lawyers. I want to go work with her. So I kind of fell into recruiting. And then after like six months of doing this, I'm like, I'm getting, I'm bringing in clients. I'm finding people jobs. I'm like, why am I handing over my commission? I should just do this on my own. So I started my own recruiting company, like mm-hmm. finding jobs for people, mm-hmm. you know, and my goal really was to just do it, kind of make the same amount of money, you know, just doing things my own way. But right away, a client called me and she's like, do you do temp placement as well? I'm like, I don't know what the hell temp placement, but I come from a place in business of never say no. Like, sure. Yes. The answer is always yes. We don't say no. We say yes to everything. And that's a big theme with our guests. Yes. It's it's true. It's like, so I'm like, I have no idea how to do temp. I mean, I'm one person sitting in my kitchen at that time. I mean, I started out small. I'm like, yes. And then the next thing I knew, I needed to payroll these people. So I'm like, oh, you could hire a payroll company. So it's, it's like, I kind of just, it's really that whole fake it till you make it. That was really always my motto in business. That's us too, Dave. Yeah. We're so similar. It's so important to be the way. And we all start at the kitchen table. It, it, and you guys are there right now with your. Yes, I love being yeah. in the kitchen because you know then we can eat more, eat more. That's our theory. Never fall in the fridge. And we know you like to eat, Marge, as we've seen on R H O and J. I know. I'm one of those who just is like, take the food to go, take the food to go. <laughs> which we love. So, I mean, it was kind of like that. So I said yes to everything. And then I realized the more I said yes, the more I'm like, wait a second, if I just work like four more hours today, I can make even more money. So what I started out to do and just make like the same amount of money and just kind of do things on my own by saying yes, I just realized like, God, it's my business. The harder I work, the more money I'm going to make. And it wasn't just like money oriented. It was like, I always had, this is advice I'd give. I was on another podcast recently and they're like, it was about reality TV. And they're like, what advice would you give to someone starting on a reality TV? I would give someone the same advice that I gave myself when I started my own business. Like this is not going to last. I always had that mentality when I started my business of like this amount of money that I was making right from the first year, it was way more than I ever expected. I'm like, okay, you had a good year. Well, then I had another good year. I'm like, wow. But I'm like, this is just going to end at some point for a lot of reasons. One, I can't work like 20 hours a day for the rest of my life because I work all the time. Two, you know, the market's going to change. Three, who knows? So I just, I really kind of worked every day as if it was my last, which I think is a good thing for people. So, I mean, I kind of had that mentality of like, this isn't going to last forever. And I, listen, I truly believe that if you're successful in business, this is my honest belief. I believe you know, maybe 80% of it is like smarts and intelligence and hard work. And I really do believe like 20% is just luck. It's like the right time, you know, like even like look at someone like Bethany Frankel. Listen, I am not taking away anything from her. It's a brilliant idea. She is so successful. Yes, it obviously helped that she was on a reality TV show. But I think there's a, a small portion of luck built in. It was just like the right idea at the right time. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. right. Yeah. So I mean, like, mix. it's the right mix. It's, it's the right mix. So, I mean, like part of timing, like, you know, this was back when you staffing agencies for everything. So I had like a lot of really hard searches I was working on for my clients. A lot of easy stuff. It was like, find us three college kids. I'm like, you're going to pay me for this? Like, this Marlene, is easy. Marlene, Jesus. Marlene, oh what are you doing Marlene? in the kitchen? Does, does, oh, does Marlene, Marlene want to come on? Show. She plays Marlene. No, he, uh, no. No. Not her. It's your husband. I mean, this is behind the kitchen table. Not behind the velvet rope, but behind the kitchen table here. That's a good name for a podcast, too. Behind the kitchen. Yes, or on top of the kitchen table. I know. Don't give me the finger. She's a sicko. Let's go back. Okay, so you sold the business. You cashed out. And then you're like, what am I going to do? I sold the business. I cashed out. I said, what am I going to do now? I didn't really know what I was going to do, nor necessarily want to do much. But <laughs> then I, I no, I mean like, for, that, you know, for some reason it never happens to me. Somehow I always like make a ton of money that someone wants to fucking sue me, but go ahead. There's that too. I mean, 
So, right. So I didn't know what I wanted to do. Then I ended up actually, which I did not necessarily want to do. I fell into running recruiting departments, like major corporations. Like I headed up recruiting at Stewart for about two years after this. So kind of after I sold, I went in-house and I ran, I ran recruiting departments. I was at like Omnicom, which is like a huge advertising agency. So I was all being offered all these jobs for these companies that I didn't even really want, but okay, you know, like, let's go make some more money. Let's go to work. Like I was earning an honest living, which, you know, listen, there was a transition after working for myself for many years and now going in house and like actually going to work every day. That was an interesting transition, but I did it for a while. And I, I just kept working at all these companies that kept merging, like Martha Stewart merged. And, you know, then when they merged, they eliminated shared services and the HR and recruiting always got eliminated. So when I left my last company after they merged, which was Omnicom advertising, that's when I was like, what am I going to do? And I keep going from job to job, you know, and I'm like, now I really am just over it. And that's when I fell into my hobby of like, I am obsessed with reality TV. I've always, I grew up just always being obsessed with pop culture, like 90210, Melrose Place. I love it. I was just, right? Like I was just that. Yes. Pop. So it's no... It's no, I mean, I love the OC with Misha Barton. I love Desperate Housewives. So when there was this reality show that was called The Real Housewives, the OC, that was like a blend of Desperate Housewives and the OC in the reality form, I'm like, well, why would I need this show? I think this show is like made for me. And then I started watching it and I'm like, all that stuff that's going on behind the gates of Coda de Casa, this is a great freaking show. And so I kind of just fell into loving Bravo, which was just a natural extension of everything else that I've always loved up to that point. So, right. So when so, I left all these, yes. Wait, I just have to ask you, but wait a minute. How did you decide to go on Millionaire Matchmaker? Do people uh -huh. know David was on Millionaire Matchmaker? I was Millionaire <laughs> Matchmaker 2010. Thank you for bringing me back to that lovely time. <laughs> Believe it or not. Believe it or not, so believe it or not, I was in the mix for like a gazillion different reality TV shows throughout my life. Like there were shows that were going to be, you know, nothing gets green lit. Like so, so little gets green lit. Like, yeah, I know. and so every time I would, you know how it is. So like every time I would get a call, I would be like, yeah, this sounds great. But like, and, you know, of course the casting people are like, no, it's attached to a major network. It's going to get green lit. So I asked for like a, a real life will and grace. It was going to be me and a friend of mine. First day. I was like, this oh, is a great idea, so right? Doesn't that sound fun? Like it's, a, it's, it's a major network that starts with a, I'm like, well, it's obviously the E network or Oxygen. And they're like, it's green lid, blah, blah, blah. Have, do you, have, have you seen this show on the air today? No. <laughs> no, like, no, 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 no. Same thing with me. Right. I was going to do two shows. I was signed with two big production companies. Um, and one filmed a pilot. They were in our house for three and a half weeks. I was like, it's a done deal. Pigtails and power tools. I oh, filmed confessionals. And confessionals, everything. I looked amazing. My boots, I, I, mean, I was so excited. I was like, ah, this is it. This is it. P.S. doesn't get picked up. You know, we filmed a show pre previously to that. Also, I was locked up for two years, going to be doing my own shows. I'm like, but, but, but that's why I declined Housewives the first time. P.S. That show is never made to the air. Not yet. Not yet. Pay Not well. yet. I mean, maybe now that you're on Housewives, who knows? By the way, <laughs> Pigtails, by the way, Pigtails and Power Tools, what a brilliant name for a show. It is, yeah, it is. Thank you. Could be Power Poof, could be anything. <laughs> That's like amazing. So it's like, I was in the mix for, there, there was another show, it was called The L Train. You know how like The L Train goes through the center of Manhattan on 14th Street? It was going to be me and a group of friends. I, I'm like a producer's best best wish because they're like go and find your group i had to go find everyone i put together all the trend it was like amazing and i agree that show. you are you it's could do anything and i mean you're friends with so many people that would have been great but i just would have been how how can we, i'm gonna get how your experience on millionaire <laughs> magic was because they did say listen i like patty stanger you know i'm friends with her she always comes to the defense so much but you know she's great but um you know they did say you were shallow Dave. They did. They did. And I don't think you're shallow at all. They, they did fun. say it was... No, they did say Rochelle. Well, that was the thing. So, like, out of all these shows I was in the mix for, I had these producers reach out to me to be, and I was like, out of every show that I, I actually wanted to happen, 
I'm like, oh, you know what it is? I just wasn't in the mood to date anyone at this point in my life. So here it is. I'm like, well, of course, yeah, sure. I'll try out for this. But like, it's the last thing I want out of every show that I had possibly in the mix that I actually do want. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know how it is. It's always what you don't really yes. want. You know, so I just, they came to my house. I was like, whatever, you know, sure. And then it was like months later or weeks later. It felt, I think it was like months later where I was like, just checking in if you have anything else. I assumed I didn't get this. I'm like leaving the country, you know, to go travel for like two weeks. And they're like, what do you mean you're about to leave the country? I'm like, no, you're actually going to get this. And I'm like, it was months ago. What? So I got that. Yes. Which I didn't necessarily want. They did say I was shallow. Patty <laughs> made me walk. I mean... Listen, I mean, was I more shallow back then? Probably. Listen, you know how they say that you like mellow out with age? I've totally mellowed with age. I yeah. don't know about you, Lexi, you, Margaret, but I've mellowed with age. Yes, totally. Sure. I totally mellowed with age. I'm too exhausted to be a shallow slut now. Exactly. You know, what we wanted when we were younger is that we matured. We matured. I also want to point out to you, you know, David graduated high school with Dorit from uh, Housewives of Beverly Hills. And obviously Dorit did not have an English accent then, did she, Dave? Okay, so different year. We're different years, but we were at high school at the same time. We share sisters. Like my BFF from high school, her sister is Dorit's BFF. Oh. No, yeah. So at my friend's 30th birthday party, yes, I am over 30. I know that's shocking. <laughs> my, at my friend's birthday party, which was on her father's bow, um, her, um, her, so my friend's younger sister got to bring, you know, was bringing a plus one in the bow and the plus one was Dorit. So we were, I was out at sea with Dorit back in, back in the day. No, there was no accent back then. No, and by the way, honest, she's, had quite, she's had quite the glow up. I mean, I think she's stunning, but that's the ultimate glow up. Well, yeah, she had dark hair, curly hair. I mean, okay, it was a different time and we don't need to say exactly what year it was. But she's had a glow up, like she, and it's really I funny. Said, Another I said friend. She's had her nose done. She's denied, yeah. but I see pictures, and that's a nose tweak if I ever saw one. Yeah. And honestly, like, I mean, I can say this: I'm Jewish. Like, I don't know what. Like, my sister had a nose job. There was no Jewish girl in Connecticut that I went to high school with that didn't have a nose job. Yeah, there's no yeah. shame in a nose job. I, I don't give it. The first thing I did when I moved to New York fix my nose. No, no, you know, my nose in real life isn't big, but on camera it looks a little big sometimes. My tip seems to drop. I don't know how, why that's happening. It's like yeah, older. My no, needs a did, did you have a nose job, Mara? No, no. And Mara Singer has such a good nose. Her nose is like the cutest like little nose tip. It's adorable. No, I did not have a nose job. I don't know. I don't ever really look at people's noses. I look at other things. I'm just all about the Botox. I'm just all about like as young as one could look. At least for me, that's all yes. I really care about. Well, I just also feel like too much Botox, you have no emotion, you have no this, and fillers and Botox, you start looking cabbage patchy. So I was like more the about the face. Like, scary. The fillers, you start looking like, you know, really freaky. But Dave, yeah. let's just move on to like the good stuff. It's like, so then how did you start? Because listen, I met you, you were standing outside of, what was it, People? Magazine, what was it when you took the first picture? Was it, it wasn't Watch What Happens Live. Where were we? It, it was not Watch What Happens Live, but you know, it's really funny. I can't, or AOL? Maybe AOL. I, I honestly can't remember when I met you. Isn't that crazy? You were, yeah, you were standing outside. You're like, Margaret. I was like, hey, Jim, you know, I was, it was my first season. I think it was AOL. The AOL building, and, and you were out there, and, and, and you stopped people for pictures, and you know where to show up. You show up at the magazines, you do the pictures, you show up at the TV studios. Now, how did you get, like, what made you start doing that? Isn't that a good question? <laughs> <laughs> isn't that, really, isn't, isn't that the million dollar question? I mean, well, here's the thing. And this is like no knock against like all these recap podcasts. Like my podcast, Behind the Belt Rope, is not a Housewives recap podcast. It's about me with like real life experiences, you know, like when you and I hang out, yes. I'm like, yeah, like, and you know, I went to make like coffee at Margaret's house and like I broke the coffee maker and, you yes. know, <laughs> Right, but it, people are like, well, how are you able to hang out and then talk? I'm like, of course, if there's something very, like, I remember once I was 
traveling when we were on the way to Asbury. We were in the car and you turned around. You're like, this is not to leave this car. And everyone's yes. like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like all the way in the back. And you're like, no, David, back there. I'm talking <laughs> to you before you're behind the Velvet Rope podcast. Like, if you mention, I'm like, of course. So that's what I always say to people. Like, listen, I know what not to mention. Like, I know when it's confidential. Like, yeah, what great things are, you know, the circle of trust. And I think people have to know that, that you know there's certain things that you can't say when, you know, when it's cross line of friendship. Listen. You're friends with a lot of different people. But I do like, you know, cross line because I would see you at so many events. You were here, you were there. And then, unbeknownst, I mean, you did, you were friends with Jennifer Aiden first because she wanted to claim you as her own. We all make mistakes, Margaret. We all make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, then, you, Mark Sr. worked in the city. And, you know, your apartment was across the street from the bar Marge Senior would hang out with, with her glamour, her glamour boys, uh, Elmo. And then you, you were, like, immediately intertwined with Marge Senior. So, really, Marge Senior, like, swooped you right into the fold. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. So, I mean, two things. First, to your other question about, like, how did I get involved yes, with all yes. this. So that's the thing. Like, I don't understand, like, the recap podcast. Like, the people that, like, sit around, and I'm not knocking anyone, but, like, the people that are watching The Housewives on TV and then talking about it for days and hours. Like, that's great. I'm all about that. But I was like, you know what? Like, this isn't, like, no offense, of course. This isn't, like, you know, Brad Pitt. This isn't, like, Sharon Madonna. Like, I am going to uh, insert myself. That. We all know I'm not getting a fucking Academy Award. Nor am I <laughs> belting, belting out a song and getting a Grammy. Anything no, can happen. I mean, can happen. Listen, I'm sure you sing way better than me. <laughs> but I'm, like, tone deaf. No, but I, so, I mean, I was like, you know, to me... That's why people, like, when I was doing all this and getting all these pictures, like, people didn't realize it was more about me than, it, than people thought. It wasn't like I was just some lap dog, like, standing on the side of a corner. Like, I was like, you know what? I'm going to insert myself into this story. Like, instead of just sitting around and watching this and, and talking about it for hours, it, is, it was more selfish than people thought. I mean, it was like, I'm going to insert what? myself into the story, and I'm just going to become friends with these people, the real people. Yeah. And... Who, That's right. I like right? that. See, yes. it wasn't yes. just like let me let me bow at the altar. It was like no, like it, it goes two ways. And like there's a process to get there. This really is what my book is about. Is like it's how to become friends with not just a reality star. Like if you want to become friends with someone, yes, I doubt that you're just gonna apply this process to Madonna and now you're gonna be <laughs> her best friend. <laughs> But if you want to become friends with a Margaret Josephs, guess what, people? You too. So really, yes, that's the yes. whole thing. Bring so I was, it's not that hard yet. Exactly. I'm probably one of the easier ones to sway over than other people. Show I'm less, food. Show up with food, feed her. No, but you were very sweet. And then Marge Senior immediately fell in love with you. And it's just because you guys were at the same bar. Then you started working with Marge Senior in the office. And going to the Hamptons like every Going to the weekend. Hamptons every weekend. You're with Mark Senior. Jet sent to the Hamptons while I was stuck in fucking New Jersey, which kind of wasn't <laughs> right. You two were living the jet set lifestyle. You take my dog, which was very nice of you. But we so took we, Bella. Yeah, you took Bella. That was fine. We did. Mart Senior and I had a great time those weekends in the Hamptons. We were a party hopping. Like, listen, Mart Mart Senior held court in in the Hamptons. Yes, you guys were jetting around, yeah. and it, it was it was good time. So you immediately became part of the family. So that's how I want everyone to know that I how I became good friends with David because Mart. You know, we were friendly because I'd see him at events, and I thought he was so sweet and so nice. And I was like, wow, I see him all over the place. And then Mart Senior. You know, we started hanging out with him all the time. And I was like, oh, my God, he's Mark Senior's plus one. So immediately, you know, he's been at every event and part of the family. And, and uh, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, he, he knows his birthday. We kind of have an event like that. Yeah. And then we, we had such yeah. a good time. And we have a good time. And then we immediately discussed. I was like, David, you know so many people. Listen, you're close with Luann. Yes. You were just on Housewives in New York a few weeks ago. I saw you for like my podcast behind the velvet rope like so it was like an anti which i didn't realize all these people were dming me everyone was confused about that event i got so many dms who were like i don't understand what this event was like it was a charity it was like it really was like a bullying event where an you anti-bullying event right so, like, in high school, I mean, listen, A, I was overweight in high school. Believe it or not. Shut, I, I, you were a slice, but go ahead, yeah. 
I was overweight. And, you know, like, I mean, I was a closeted gay kid in, like, Connecticut. So, like, I was bullied in high school. Oh. So, uh, anti-bullying story. So, they were like, okay, you're perfect. Come on on. You can talk about your... And you have a podcast. I mean, you could promote it. But it really was funny how they showed, like, the women during that, like, just sitting there. Because it's true, like the cast was just doing their own thing. Like nobody was paying attention. It was funny that it was an anti-bullying event and yet the whole cast is sitting there like on their phone, they're shopping. <laughs> they're, like, I think they showed like, it, no one was paying attention, but you know. No, I, yes. have, I have to ask you one question. It's totally with, like, how are you, you know, and I know you get, what I do like about you all is that you stick to your convictions mm -hmm. and you're yes. friends with people, some people who are controversial. And Very I'm good sure. friends with Kim D. And, and listen, I don't know her personally, but, you know, a friend, dear friends of mine have had issues with her. I know really nothing about her personally, but she's, she's definitely a controversial character. And I'm friends, you'd be shocked. I have some, you know what, this whole quarantine, I'm doing just what I've always, I've become friends with a lot of other controversial people in the past. Please name them, on. name them. Not like, like who? I just had on my podcast, like Max Boyens and Brett Cap from Vanderpump Rules. They're two of the newbies. There's five newbies this season on Vanderpump Rules. It came out in the past like few months that like both of them, independent of each other, have these really racist tweets that they are, that they put out in the past. Yeah, if you Google each of them, Max Boyens. And, so they both came on my podcast. So I've gotten to know them through this whole process. Here's my thing. I... And this applies to Kim D too. Like I judge people based on my one-on-ones with them. Dave, Dave, you know I have a famous Ooh. saying about that, right? You are the company. You get trouble Dave? with the soggy flicker. What I is it? Repeat, you are. You, I can't repeat it because you know she accused me. But you know, you know my famous saying. I don't want to say it. No, I don't even think. I mean, I yes, know. Remember, she called me an anti-Semite because. Yes. You yeah. can't judge people just by the way she used about the whole picture. I'm not going to get into it about Kim D because, you know, I don't know really enough about her. That was such personal shit and show shit and everything else. I can yes. give people if they apologize and don't continue to do sick, twisted Everyone behavior. Makes Everybody makes a mistake. If and if they're accountable and, and if they um, move forward and, and change their behavior. That's okay. But I can't just, you know, judge people by the way they treat me because like, I'll put it this way. Osama bin Laden was probably good to his dog. You know what I mean? So That's his dog would say he's a good person or his mother will say he's a good person. So the whole point is we, we cannot go by that, Dave. I get it. And by the way, I don't just like everyone. There, you there are housewives. Like, listen, Behind the Velvet Rope is like a journalistic podcast. We'll give it, you know. But I understand that, but that doesn't mean you have to like everybody who comes up. You could give them their voice, but you have to, you know, you have to be tough on them. That's a, first of all, that's exactly what I say about the guests that come on behind the velvet rope. Like I got so much hate. Like how could you have Brett and Max on the racist? I feel I want to bring you on. I'm giving you a voice to tell your truth. And I'm not even saying that I like everyone who comes on. I like everyone I interview for my podcast. To me, it's like, I want to bring someone. I want them to tell their truth. And then I want the listener to have a discussion about it. It's like, if you, and listen, there's a lot of people that come on my podcast that are not cast members that are like, you know, that I think just want their 15 minutes of fame. Like people come on and say all sorts of shit and then it blows up. But, you know, so that's another thing that people come on and they're like, this person's a fame whore. And I'm like, I'm not saying that I don't think they're a fame whore. I'm just like, I feel behind the velvet rope. It's your time as the guest to tell your truth. And then everyone else can have an opinion. And I, I, I have an opinion. I just want to keep it to myself. I, you know what, but maybe, you know, Dave, maybe you're going to have to start giving maybe your, like, a little opinion after the fact. I think so. Maybe. 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 <laughs> no, I mean, listen, I, I'm not, listen, Margaret, you're part of the, you're the main part of the reason who, the, behind the velvet rope, it really does exist in a large part to oh, you. Thank to you, like, thank you. No, because I felt like you knew so many people, and I was like, why aren't you making money off this? Like, you know, you got to transition into a business, because it's like, you're going out by Swoopa, you're, you're having dinners, you're having discussion with them. There's no reason not to be interviewing all these people. Yeah, I, I don't know what took me so long. You know, and now, now that it is a business, it really is like a different relationship. Like, I don't think I am going to be standing on street corners anywhere. You know, like, I think we've graduated from that. And, you know, it's a different, <laughs> but, you know, I have to say, I think everything in life happens for a reason. Like, 
when I reach out to people now, it's shocking to me how many people are like, like for instance, I'll tell you, I'll give you a hint. Like Tamara Judge was just on my podcast. It's not out yet. I hate talking about people before they come out. Cause like, you know, I like that little element of surprise, but like I, I reached out to Tamara as if I was a stranger, you know, and I, it, it wasn't over DM. It was, it was in an email, you know, just like I have a, and she's got right back to me. She's like, hello, like, hello, Earth to David. Like, I know exactly who you are. Like, of course I'll come on your podcast. And I'm like, oh, you know, so really I do think everything in life happens for a reason. And like all those years of me, you know, standing on a street corner being like, hey, Tamara, it's me. She's like, yeah, of course I know who you are. I met you 800 times. Exactly. So it really, it has, it really has truly helped me book guests for this show. To your point, I should have been doing this all along. It's okay because now you're at the point. Everything is so everything is timing, and I, and I think that's great. And I think you know that's absolutely perfect. You know what I love, which I said I was going to promote, and I haven't. Done, I loved uh, your Sutton interview because I think people were hard on her when that came out. Sutton from Beverly Hills. I love Sutton, and you didn't love her at first, though. No, I loved her right from the beginning. I knew style right from the so beginning good. she was going to be good. Yeah. I could just tell. I love I love a Southern socialite. I like her very, like, bless her heart kind of attitude. So now you like her, Lexi. Yes. I thought she was great. They right needed that, too. You know why I like her? Because the thing is, I love authentic people. So, like, when she came on my podcast, she was talking. It kind of made a headline in one of the papers. Like, she was saying something about, like, her summer house, and she had to move her piano. I think she was there for, like, a month. And so people were like, why she's moving her entire piano for a month. But to her, that really is her reality of her world. Like if you have all that money, of course you need your piano for three weeks when you I go mean, she's down. she's fancy pants and she's she a is. genuine fancy pants and she's not putting anything on. Right. So that's why I love her. However, then a million people were like, I hate her. But you know what I love is like a lot of people listen to that episode of my podcast with something and they truly commented, I actually like her now. And so that, that to me is like the best. And I'm not, again, I'm not telling you to like everybody I interview, but like in that instance, people were like, oh, she's actually seems real. And I'm like changing people's opinion behind the velvet rope. I behind love it. Behind the velvet rope, you're changing. <laughs> the yes, exactly. You are, you're doing, and you know, I love your podcast because listen, I don't watch every reality show so I can get caught up by listening to you and getting the inside poop. You know what I mean? And I, and I love hearing every, everybody's opinion. And you do get absolutely amazing guests. And it's the opposite of what we do. Yes. And it's exactly. not a recap, which is, which is good. I, I just, yeah. So, I mean, like, with the, the, like the, the genesis of the podcast when it started was really just me and my stories. Like, I was in Niagara Falls with Margaret Josephs for the weekend, and this is what happened. Yeah. So, I mean, it really just, it started to be like, nobody, there's no podcast where people are, for lack of a better word, like inside. Someone would kill to spend a weekend at Margaret Joseph's Oh, house. that's so sweet. That's so <laughs> sweet. I love that. No, we had good times. You slept on Mark's senior sofa, and we went, where are we going? Oh, we went to Atlantic City together, and I had that temper tantrum. <laughs> yes, my yes. Not like chlorine. And I think, and when I talked about that, I actually think I said, you know, actually, I'm, I'm positive of this. It's not even out yet. I just did that whole thing about when Sonny was there. And I said, one of the housewives had an absolute ten temper tantrum, and I did not mention your name. See? Because <laughs> yeah. I'm like, is and Margaret going to really? really not, I'm really not high maintenance, but the truth is, I'm not, I can't stay in a room that, like, has somebody else's stains on the sheets. Sorry, people. I can't do I, that. Don't think that's to ask too much, but I did say no. But I also talked about another temper tantrum later on in the day. Oh, oh, oh yeah, oh, about Brett. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, yes. the rest of, yeah, I don't like when people. Yeah, oh my God, when uh, that was a, that was a totally other family event kind of situation when people. But I didn't mention her name. I said it. one of the housewives had a temper tantrum as we were about to head to dinner, and I didn't say it was you. But I oh, it's okay. I had, I, that was a very temper tantrum. I was also really menstrual. And shockingly, <laughs> 53 years old, I still get my period. That was a whole other thing. I had a menstrual blowout. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <And Brian laughs> the next it was a crazy weekend. It was a crazy oh, weekend. Yeah. You really, I mean, seriously. So, David, what is like... Like, what's next? Like, you're going to come out. I think you should be coming out. You're going to come out with a book. 
it's going to be a how-to book. Listen, I've had a lot of ideas for books and I've talked to people and they're just like, no, no, like that's next. And I'm like, okay, listen, I don't know everything. So, okay, I'll next. And this one, the more I talk to people in the know, they're like, this is actually a good idea. So it really is going to be like a how-to book. Like how to go from fan to friend. And if you follow I these it. faces, I love, it. I love they, fan to friend. I know because I don't like when people like you know what they, they like question something. Oh, can you know him? To, I was like, listen, he's a genuinely cool yeah. guy, and he it's is funny. So upfront, you're upfront. It's like there's no love. hidden agenda. Yes. It's not like you need anything from me. People don't understand that. I think if you want to go from fan to friend, it's like it's not like. You want to be famous. You just want to hang out. You have your own podcast. It's not like, I think people don't understand. It's just like, we have things in common. It's not like you're in awe. It's like, people don't understand. If you want to go from fan to friend, I don't even understand, which I think is kind of like, we're all regular people. If you have something in common, a commonality. And listen, I mean, to that point, right? I... Yeah. And one of the things that's in the book is like, you need to, there's a whole chapter about haters. Listen, I've heard it all. I'm a stalker. I'm a fame whore. Like, trust me, I'm very self-aware at what some of the people say. There are housewives, but to that, to your point too, it is organic. It's like, there's a whole chapter in the book towards the end of be careful what you wish for, because I don't just want to be friends with every housewife. I mean, yes, I do. But then you get to meet them and you're like, guess what? Guess what? I fucking hate you. I actually, I, I don't want anything to do with you. I don't want pictures. There's at least two housewives that I do not want a picture with. No, I do I'm not, not want to say who they are. I'm not, I know who they are, but I'm not going to say who they are. You know exactly who they are. And like, I, I don't want to be friends with you. So I, you hate me. Guess what? I fucking hate you too. So it's not just like, you know, to your point, like, our our friendship really is organic. Like we we you're a businesswoman. You you bring Lexi along. You come with Martin Senior. Like there's a reason why we become friends and family. Exactly. It's, it, it, it 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 really is organic. Like that's what people don't understand. I, I mean, we I'm willing. To nickname for you. We call you Yanni. Yanni. <laughs> we call you Yanni. <laughs> we got to make Yanni come. Lindsay, you know, we drag you along. We have a little crib. Yeah, you know, and like, listen, I'm, and this is also part of the book. Like, I'm also very simple. Like, despite the fact that, like, I like my nice things, I like yeah, my you Gucci. Order very, you're, you're not a big eater. You order, like, Caesar salad with chicken or, like, pizza. And, like, I'm very low maintenance. Like, you tell me to be somewhere at 12, it turns into 3 p.m. Like, whatever. It's, th these are not real problems. You want problems. to be a fancy friend, a friend to fit, you got to be low maintenance. Because yes. we're high. There's a whole. We're not high maintenance. I'm not high maintenance. No, and this is all in the book. I mean, this is how I ended up talking about you in the book a lot, just because, I mean, you're not the only one, but, you know, yeah. we've become legitimate friends. So I really don't just like everyone. And, you know, like, there's, it's, it's, it's like organic. Yes, it is organic. But I think that, I think you can also inspire people to do a podcast and, and do their passion. It doesn't have to be uh, just a recap. It doesn't, you know, have to just be about reality. It could be about whatever they're passionate about. But I think it's so interesting because, listen, you had a very established career, but you wanted to do what you were passionate about, and now you're making money. I mean, thank God, like, you know, you sold your business today, you were able to do it. But also, I think it's important that you could do what you're passionate about and you're enjoying yourself. Totally. And, like, I hate to talk in stereotypes, but or, like, cliches, I guess, is the right word. But it is true that if you do what you're passionate about, it doesn't seem like a day of work. It's so true. It's so true. I'm like, this doesn't I mean I work like a dog on my podcast don't get me wrong like an actual dog I know like, you're so both <laughs> you're like I mean yeah like I literally I'm with friends this weekend and they're like you have to stop talking about your podcast like enough like shh, talk about something else I'm like I get it I know I'm being annoying but you know it's true that like if you really like what you do it doesn't feel like work it just kind of all falls into place and you know I am like to your point, it doesn't have to be about the housewife. Someone reached out to me. This kid is in high school and he's, I mean, he happens to be a big Bravo fan, but he wants to start a podcast. And I'm like, yes, I'm going to take you under my wing. You know, like call me, we'll talk about it. I'll help you out. Yeah, so, I mean, mean, he could be like your little intern. I know. Lexi was, Lexi gave me some good intern ideas the other day. That's like the Yes, next step. yes. We love a good little intern. I need an intern. I mean, Sonia's big with the interns. Yes. 
She is big with the interns. Sonia is very big with the interns. I think I need to follow in Sonia's footsteps. Listen, I'd like to have a bunch of little interns. I, I can keep 10 people busy all day, every day, if, if I were allowed to. That's how many ideas I have going on in this head. My problem is I love to do everything over food. I love to yeah. cook for the people. Bro, oh, I come into waffles. It's all fattening. We don't make salad. Yeah, we're very big with the fattening. Food. The point of here. Big with the well, when I was at your house one of the last times, I, yeah, remember? I think you made pancakes. I'm like, oh my God, pancakes is the last thing I need. I know, I know. I, we're such, we're such I, the eaters. There is a funny, famous story. Uh, one of our intents, the first week, we had like the main table in the center of Budokan and one of our business partners was like, seriously, this is not the way to like integrate an intern into your business, to bring it to like the central Budokan, table of yeah. Budokan. Yeah, like, exactly. The start is just going to think like, like, you know, this is just the way it is all the time. But I, I can't help we it. I do, my best, I, I do my best work around food. But so behind the velvet rope, I mean, now how many days a week are you doing it? Can you believe I'm doing it four days a week now? Oh my Ooh. God, four days. Like watch what happens live. It's more. Well, here's the I thing. Mean, it, you might just watch what happens live. Amazing. I mean, it was two days a week, and then it went to three towards the beginning of quarantine. I mean, here's the other thing. Like, my book is a quarantine baby. Like, when quarantine started, I had. I mean, this just shows you. Like, after having businesses, I mean, I had like you know the first week. Listen. At, at, everyone's money was against me because A, I'm out like seven nights a week. and Yes, I know. Days. I mean, Jesus, you're at the car. Where are you not at the Carlisle? Where are you all the time? The Regency with my the buddy. The Regency. You, listen, you guys have to come to the Regency with me one night. I know, you're cocktailing up at the Regency with Harry Dubin. Listen, like, you know, even though I'm in New Jersey all the time with you guys, I, I do, it's, there, there's times I need to remind myself, like, wait, you live in New York for a reason. Yes, yes, yes. I love being a New York City boy. So I'm out. So when quarantine started, everyone's money was against me. You know, they were like, you're not going to make it. You're out every night, Harry. So I'm like, listen, like, I'm going to follow the rules. Like, I get it. This is a global pandemic. The first week was not fine. But then after a week, I'm like, listen, I can either sit here and feel sorry for myself and just sleep this whole thing away, or let's use this time wisely. So I, the first thing I did was like double down on my podcast. Like, I'm like, let me just start interviewing more people. And so that's why we went to three days a week. And then we just have so many people wanting to come on now. We're officially like Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. We Jesus, Tuesday. that's Ooh. so crazy. That's so crazy. That's, that's crazy. so busy. I mean, we're twice a week. And I'm just like, yeah. Woo. People don't realize. They think like, oh, I could talk to people. I'm going to have a podcast. I'm like, listen, I'll it's work. help you. It's work, it's people. Work. Anybody who's thinking of starting podcasts, podcast, it's work. And you have to research your yes. guests. And right, David, if you're, we're inspiring anybody, Podcast is great to have, but you have to research your guests. You have to know what you're talking about. It's, a, it's not faking the funk with a podcast. No, you have to research your guests. Yeah, you can't just start talking. I mean, you have to be able to, like, pace time, keep your eye on the clock, move the conversation along, and cover all the basic points. And then I think the other thing that people need to realize with a podcast is, really, to me, it's like consistency is key. Like, I think, like, if you're going to – you know, I mean, I think if you're going to release a podcast and then four weeks later you're ready to do another one, that's not going to work. You have to pick a day, stick to it, have a regular schedule. People need to know when you're coming out and relatively stay on topic. Like, I think it's good to mix things up, but I think, you know, you got to get your shtick going of like, it's kind of the same almost every time with, you know, a little variety. But I think when you're a new show, much variety is not, I think. And the other thing is, I think, I'm lucky in the sense that nobody was doing these like stories. I mean, now it's turned into a lot of views. It's some of my stories. I think if you're thinking of starting a podcast, I would think of something that's not saturated. If you're going to have a Bravo recap podcast and do like hot takes and I don't know, to me, it's like, there are so many. Yeah, so, I agree. There's so many. Yeah. Pick a, I mean, and I'm not saying that you can't have a good Bravo recap podcast, but there's so many good ones, but make it different, but make it different. Yeah, and so or, or you know, pick another or pick another network, or do something else, or pick one show, or pick you know. Totally. But there's so many housewife recaps. There's so many things. There's just so many. So I don't know how if you like if you're and the people that DM me night and day are just like I can't believe I found a show that is like an insider's point of view. I mean, for lack of a better word, it is not a recap. Like I hear all day, like, I can't believe you're not a recap show. This is like, I wish I found you like years ago. I'm like, well, 
I didn't exist years ago yeah. in the podcast world. With, I want to ask David our, our questions that we, you know, yes. David, yes. our main questions that we have to ask every guest. Uh, you can ask me okay. anything. Go ahead, Lexi. So the March is a very famous quote of pulling up her big girl panties, which is the moment that you really dread, but you just got to get it done. In your career over like, you know, all the relationships, everything different, what's like the one standout moment that you were like, shit, I really got to pull up my big girl panties and handle this? Just in like things that I didn't want to do. Uh huh. Yeah, like what's like your standout moment of your big girl panties pull up? Well, I mean, considering that I am an established business person that went to law school and, you know, has this degree and majored in accounting and had a business that I sold, um, really all of it of becoming like friends with like the housewives, like standing on a fucking street corner outside of Watch What Happens is like, you better have your ego and you better you better like know who you are inside because you're really really you're putting yourself at such a subservient <laughs> level the, the whole no, thing I be shot down just yes. yeah i know what you're saying okay. and you know what? it's not even about being shot down it's about like when it's january and it's 9 a.m in the morning and you're having your cup of coffee to be like i fucking have to do this tonight at 11 45 like i am dreading it dreading it but i am a very results oriented person so for me it's like i don't have an ego like look down upon me for doing this i don't give a shit to me it's like just put on your big girl pants and to be honest with you if you listen to my early episodes my tagline to end my podcast was it was a joke but i would always talk i would end every episode i don't really do it now i don't think it's corona appropriate but i would talk about how like Every night I just want to stay home and take a bath and light my candles, but I put on my big girl pants and I force myself out because I, David Yadav, can best serve you all behind a velvet robe. Oh, that literally I love that. It's true. You're right, David. Like but love there's, there's nothing exciting about going and hitting the streets every day. But go on. <laughs> I love it. What about the Marge also says that? It's another big question. Success to me was 50% determination, 50% delusion. What percentage determination, you know, what percentage delusion are you? Meaning like what? It's just on my like own. Like me, I would say my successes was, you know, my goal to successes, I was 50-50 determination, part ter determination, part de delusion. What percentages are those for you, if any? I mean, maybe I, no delusion. No. Margaret, Lexi, there's, a lot, of, there's, there's a lot of delusion. Um, oh, give me the percentage <laughs> breakdown. People want to know. 60% determination, 40% delusion. It's okay. a pretty high delusion. Okay. That's it? a good high delusion. I agree. I think success is a good high delusion. Yeah. And then we always say, you know, there's a lot of entrepreneurial advice. There's a lot of, like, you know, numbers of vice and Forbes and CEO. We're not bullshit. We are entrepreneur real. Yes. So what's the realest advice that you could give any entrepreneur that's like just the there, most to real some, like, advice. grassroots, most real to the heart advice? And same here. Like when I started my company that I sold, everyone was like, you don't have a business plan? I'm like, a business plan? I mean, like, I'm doing the same thing I did working for someone else. The business plan is like, I know how to do this. So what do you, and it, literally people told me I was insane my first year. Like, how could you not have it? I'm like, what the hell is a business plan? So I'm like very entrepreneurial to the core also. I think just really the two pieces of advice are believe in yourself, like bet on yourself. Like, you know what you can do. Like, I cannot walk into a hospital room tomorrow and operate and I can't give myself Botox. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I mean, I wish I could give myself Botox. Trust me, I would be giving it to myself all day. But I think like believe in yourself, like you know what you can accomplish. You start a business and you're like, I got this. I got it figured out. I know what I'm doing. Listen, I, I didn't know how to do a podcast before I had one. I'm like, and then I just figured it out and I'm like, oh, this, I, 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 I can do this. So I think believe in yourself. Like if you think you can do it, you can do it. That's the first thing. I think the second thing is don't believe the naysayers. Don't listen to the haters. Don't listen to the doubters. Like just keep your head down and keep your eyes on the prize and keep working and just drown out all the negative noise. I think that's the second that's thing. Great advice. 
I'm and then I think that, right? That's, and then I think the third thing is, and listen, again, I have my haters, oh, blah, blah. You know, and then I think the, the final third thing is like fake it till you make it. Like whatever your goal is, just pretend like you can do it and say yes to the outside world and then inside say, oh, fuck. I don't know how to do this, but give me an hour to two hours. You'll figure it out if you're a smart person. Yes, if yeah. you're a smart person. But I always, the one thing I say is, but you can't overpromise. Or, but if you're a total, like, fraud, you can't be a fraud, though. No. Because I know some people who are frauds lately who are doing some shit I don't like. Yeah, that's not good. Absolutely not. And that is the one thing. I'm actually the opposite of a fraud. Me too. I'm me too. actually me too. Me too. the whole over. So, like, say yes, hedge. You know what I mean? even when I had my business, even now, like I, I hate talkers. So like to me, like, I don't want to, I never want to overpromise. Deliver. You always deliver. Right. And like over promising to me is the kiss of death mm -hmm. in business. It's to me, like I'd rather under promise. Like when I ran my recruiting firm, they're like, can you fill this job in three weeks? Uh, it's an impossible fucking job to fill. No, you know what I mean? I'd be like, I'm certainly going to try. And I got, so, you know, I, I think hedging and like kind of, not over promising is key. I think it, because the thing is then when you, you, you have like a great candidate or a great guest and you're like, call me immediately. We need to talk. I got something hot here. People will drop the phone and call you because you don't talk like that 98% of the time. Yes. So yes. when you're I, like, I, bingo. Yeah, I think fake it till you make it is, is different. It's always like, like what you and I say, appear bigger than you are. No, if you know that, you know, that it's something that you're smart enough to achieve, even though you don't know how you're going to achieve it, that's faking until you make it. Yeah. There's a big difference right. between talkers and doers. Something that my mom told me when I was a little girl, JFDI, just fucking do it. I don't want to hear about how, I don't want to hear about yeah. as long, so just fucking do it. And that's Get me it too with fake until you make it. We always look like a much bigger company. We were in every magazine. So same thing like with you. It's just like you want a podcast, you just did it. It's like, reach out to the bigger people. Like, you reach out to the bigger people. Don't be afraid. Of exactly. Same thing. Me too. And like that mother told you, just fucking do it. I'm so about that. I'm like, it's, to me, it doesn't matter. Like, all these people in business, they're like, well, slow down. We have to. It doesn't matter how you just, just get there. Like, that's, that's my that's motto. Yeah. So, no, I don't want to hear it. Yes. Don't do anything illegal. Don't break any rules. Yeah, don't, exactly. Don't, like don't let the don't let this this other side of your business fall apart behind the scenes. But like, just get there. I, I don't need to hear about like I, I don't like the talk and meetings and like then we're gonna do this. Well, just do it. Why are we having twelve conversations about this? So it's worked well for me. It sounds like it's worked well for you guys. It applies yes. to my podcast. Yes, exactly. And right, like e e to your point, even in the guests that I book, I started small, and then like I realized like this one said yes. I'm like. I could just reach out to the biggest names on Bravo. I mean, what? They're going to say no. Okay. I mean, they're going to say uh, more people have said yes than I ever would have thought. So it's like, just love put it. yourself out there. I love it so much. Well, David, you are the best guest. I love you yes. so much on a personal level. I love Behind the Velvet Rope. I know you're going to have continued success. I want I everybody to book. listen to the book. So tell everybody where to find you. Everyone, and I love you guys too. This is like hanging out with family. And I can't wait to actually see you in person. I know, um, it's crazy. I'm going through major Marge. Well, I know, I know. Marge Sears, it's like fine rise up. I know. So everyone could find me on Instagram at David Yontef, like Y-O-N-T-E-F. On Instagram, it's at Behind Velvet Rope. There's no the in the title, at Behind Velvet Rope. And on Apple Podcasts, Behind the Velvet Rope. If you want to hear... Me interview guests from every Bravo reality show. I do go there. I don't let my guests off easy. And we also have interesting stories like, you know, sleeping over at Mart Senior's house and going to Niagara Falls with Margaret. Yes, exactly. All good fun stuff. Well, Davey, thank you so much. Enjoy so your time in you. Connecticut. Be safe. And we'll see you soon. Love you. Bye, Dave. I love Bye. you both. Bye, babe. Bye. 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 That was so fun. That was so fun. I love David Yancey. And I do think it's funny because he started as a super fan and people could make that such a negative kind of People say bad shit and it, it obsesses him because everyone's like, he's a super fan, he's a stalker, and he's a guy. You know what it is? It's just, Joe is banging him so much. I'm really sorry that might be annoying to people, but he's, he's not going to stop because he's putting our floors. And so at least you guys know that my house is getting worse <laughs> on during COVID. So I'm just going to let it keep happening. I know it's annoying as fuck.
Well, if but you anyway, don't let it keep banging, you're going to have to bang. Yeah, I'm going to have to really put out to yeah. sacrifice. But anyway, I'm just going to say, David is, um, you know, I give everybody a fair chance. He's never asked for anything. He's never won anything in return. He actually is smart. He has impeccable manners. Impeccable he manners. Up to a party without a gift. Yes, and person. the truth is, and I do, I like it. I give him credit. He never pretends to be something he's not. No, he I mean, never came with a hidden ploy. And yes, do we take pictures? Get Bella stuff. We took pictures together. We did some great things. And now he's he's done a business, and his podcast is actually great. So everybody listen to it. I think it's also inspiring to people starting a podcast. And look what he did. He, he created a whole business. So behind the velvet rope, listen to it. It's great. Yeah, he is an expert in the field. Yes. Because he started in the field. He started actually in the, in the field. field. He is the asshole taking pictures. Yeah. So everyone should listen. Um, and you can find us at Caviar Dreams, Turn Fish Budget on Instagram. Yes. Same on YouTube. And um, we have episodes every Wednesday and Friday. Mm -hmm. And you can find me at The Real Margaret Joseph. So as opposed to the fake one. Me at the life of Mrs. B, although with COVID, I don't really have any life. I know, so keep dreaming, Caviar Dreams. Keep I feel dreaming. like I'm not looking at the camera, Trevor, but it is what it is. Keep dreaming. Keep dreaming and banging. No, you don't.